Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 7th grade concept of simple and compound events, specifically how we can make sample spaces for those two different types, and we will do it in 5 minutes or less. So let's define the two first. A simple event is a probability event that has one single outcome possibility. So if we were to flip a coin, right? So let's say we were to flip a coin, we've got two possible outcomes. We could get a heads or we could get a tail. So there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Not very exciting. A compound event is typically one that we'll see in seventh grade math problem because it is more than one outcome. Could be two, could be three, could be eight but it's anything that is more than one outcome. So just think of it like a string of simple events kind of put together. So let's say that we are going to roll a die. So we know a die's got six faces, so there are six possible outcomes there, All right? So let's say we're gonna roll our die and let's also flip two coins. Right, so we could either get a heads or we can either get a tail. This is a compound event because there's three possible outcomes, right? One we're gonna get for our die, one for the first coin, and one for the second coin. So how could we show a sample space? Well, there's two different ways I wanna show you. First is going to be a list. So let's just go ahead and list out what happens if I get a one, right? If I get a one and if I get a heads, and then I can get a one, a heads, and a tails. I can get a one, a heads, and a heads. That's all I can possibly get if my first two are a one and a heads. Now I can go to a one and a tails, and I can kind of get that same thing, one and a tails, and a tails, one and a tails, and a head. So you see what I've done here is I have listed out every possible opportunity with getting a one because the only two choices of my two die, my two coins after that are heads and tails. And so what I can do is I can extend that out and I can repeat it with two, three, four, five, and six. So this first sample space is a list. Pretty simple. It just takes quite a bit of writing. The second sample space I want to show you for these 24 outcomes, you see there are four outcomes per number, so we just multiply four times six. We will see that we've got a tree diagram. So let's say, I'm going to start over here on the left, and let's say I'm going to roll my die. I'm going to start with one, and I'm going to just kind of find the pattern and move my way up. Let's say I could roll from there either a heads, or I could roll either a tails. So that's going to give me my first two uh, events, right? My die and my first coin flip. But I've got a second coin flip. So I could, on my second coin flip, either get a tails or a heads. But I also have to show that for the tails on my first coin. So you see how this tree gets a little bit bigger. And so this is my tree for the number one. And if I were to count this, I've got one, two, three, four. So I've got four options right here, four possible outcomes, and this is just with the one, and that matches these four right here. So if I wanted to, I could just kind of extend that, and I can say, all right, let's just repeat this pattern with a two. And you see, we're gonna get this same thing. We're just gonna kind of extend this tree. So it's a little bit less writing, than if I were to make my list, but it still involves quite a bit. And so you see we have the tree diagram extended all the way out. It gets a little bit scrunched up over on that right side, but you see that if we just find our possibilities here, we see we've got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, which are the same that we have on the list. Now, how do we find that without making a list or a tree diagram? Well, what we do is we say, how many possibilities are there for our cube? Six. How many possibilities are there for our coins? Two each. And if you multiply six times two times two, guess what you get? The number of possible outcomes, 24.